What is up you guys? So in today's video, I am converting my frog terrarium into a paludarium. So basically what a paludarium is, it's a terrarium with an aquatic section, um, or basically combining an aquarium and a terrarium, if you would say it that way, I suppose. So what I've done here, I basically cut a sheet of glass, the same length as the tank and a few inches tall. I am siliconing it into the tank with clear silicon. Make sure you use silicon that is meant for glass. That's very important. And yeah, I've just got like a candle sitting behind it to help hold it in position while the silicon dries. So I've got this panel on a slight backward lean as well. Um, I just want that sort of slope because the front of my terrarium is gonna be the aquatic section. And now I'm just running a second bead of silicon along the front bottom of the panel just to help with sealing it. You'll also wanna run a bead of silicon up either side of your glass panel as well. And then just gently run your finger along the silicon, smoothing it out. So once you've left it to dry for at least eight hours, preferably overnight, you wanna just put some water in just to test that it doesn't leak before you go any further with the setup. So once you're satisfied it doesn't leak, you can pretty much just pump the water out, dry it off, and move on to the next step of creating your paludarium. So next you wanna take your piece of background. So I'm using um, just a cutting of universal rock background. And this is basically gonna be siliconed to the sheet of glass, which is the divider between the water and the soil section of the terrarium or paludarium. So you just wanna put some uh, blobs of black silicon on your background and pretty much just stick it to the glass. Now this piece of background is a tad shorter than the glass, but that's honestly not a problem. As long as it's even at the top, don't worry if it doesn't reach all the way to the bottom because um, the aquatic section of this paludarium is going to have stones in the water section anyway, and they'll hide the bottom section of the background anyways. So yeah, once you've got it stuck into place, you just wanna clamp it in place so it doesn't move because it'll take again around eight to 12 hours to dry or preferably overnight. While that's drying, you wanna go up either side with some, with some more black silicon. This is basically how you blend your background edges with the edge of your tank. So you want a nice thick layer of black silicon and then you just wanna get some brown gravel and throw it against the silicon. Or if you don't wanna use gravel, you can also use cocoa fiber or peat moss, but I've found in a setup where it's gonna be wet all the time, those things do tend to break down and biodegrade over time. So it's better to use something that won't, like gravel or sand or something of that manner, as opposed to say moss or, or sphagnum moss or peat moss or cocoa fiber. So once you've got a thick layer of gravel on, just lightly uh, pat it down so it doesn't look so round looking like it's a fresh squeezed tube of silicon um, and then just throw some more gravel on it again just to cover up any exposed silicon. So you want to repeat this process on both sides of your terrarium. Once dry take your clamp off, add your stones to your back section of the terrarium. This is where all your plants are going to be. Um, so these are just gray river stones. These are basically gonna be the drainage section of this terrarium. So you just wanna add a thin layer of those, spread them out evenly. Then you wanna add um, a piece of fly screen on top of those. So basically the fly screen is just a divider. It's gonna stop your soil 
mixing with your drainage layer because that would just defeat, defeat the purpose of having it to start with. So now I'm adding my soil mix. Uh, this is pretty much a mixture of ADA soil, which is an aquarium plant soil you usually use for planted aquariums. Um, but I found it does drain quite well in terrariums. So it's a mix of ADA soil. And I've also got um, sphagnum moss and a little bit of cocoa fiber mixed through it as well, just so it's got some density to it. And then I'm adding a top layer of freshly made wet cocoa fiber just to add that nice darker look to it. Now we're gonna add our pump. So I've just got a small Aqua One pump. You can use any pump you want though. This pump does 500 liters an hour, so it's not crazy powerful. It's just enough to uh, get the water feature going and create a little bit of flow in this terrarium. This piece of PVC pipe is gonna be my outlet. And you'll notice that I've done the same thing with the PVC as I did with uh, blending the silicon. I put black silicon on the pipe and throwing gravel on it to blend it. So it looks like just a piece of rock or wood or something like that. I've only done the tip because the rest of it's gonna be relatively hidden anyways. So I put my hose in that pipe, which has an elbow joint on the end of it, which was the, that's what the hose goes in, um, just to stop water back flowing back out. It also helps to have that hose or that pipe, sorry, on a slight slant forward towards your water section so water just doesn't backflow. Next, just put in your um, plants and your wood or rocks or whatever structure you want to use. Try and utilize them as best you can to hide the pipe and the piece of wood that I've used is the old piece of wood that was in there originally. Uh, the way I've positioned it, it kind of helps hold the PVC pipe in place so it doesn't roll around either. And I'm gonna pack some plants around it too. So as the plants kind of uh, grow and their roots get a good hold in, they'll help hold it in place too. So these plants I'm using are Neon Pothos. That's what was originally in this terrarium. Um, that's what I've always had in this terrarium. I've just pretty much taken them out and now I'm putting them back in. The issue with that, well, it's not a major issue. I'd say it's just mildly inconvenient um, because with pothos especially, um, it, it grows quite wild, which is fine in a terrarium. That's kind of what I, the look I was going for with it. It looked really good the way it was growing before I pulled it apart. Um, it had grown quite long and um, the plants grow in a way where they aim their leaves towards the light. So they all stand up nice and straight aiming towards the light, which looks great. But then when you pull them all out and you go to put them all back in and you have no idea how they were originally sitting or what part of the terrarium they were from, especially with a vining plant like pothos, um, is a bit frustrating trying to replant them because they just flop around everywhere and the leaves don't sit as nicely as they originally did. Um, but that, that's only a temporary thing. Honestly, with pothos or any vining stuff, if you're doing this with it, um, just plant it, put it up, prop it up as best you can. Over the next week or two, as the, the pothos roots settle in again and start regrowing, the leaves will move towards the light and it'll look all nice and natural again. So this plant here I'm putting back in also from the original setup, it's a philodendron xanadu. I wouldn't say it's been doing amazing in this terrarium. Uh, it's it's hanging on there, but yeah, it could be doing better to be honest, but whatever. It's all I've got in there is just that Xanadu and the uh, Neon Pothos. So next I'm using more of those black or grey river stones for the front section of this paludarium, for the water section, so you just spread them out, add your water, and obviously use a water conditioner in your water to remove chlorine, so you get water conditioner at any aquarium or pet shop. Uh, pretty much do it anyways but especially if you're going to be putting frogs in this terrarium you must use water conditioner so just yeah make sure that water is conditioned and um, you're basically good to go so i am also planning on adding some small fish to this terrarium as well so if you want to do that you want to cycle it so you want to run it for about a week before putting fish in or if you wanted to put fish in a little bit sooner you can use a biological supplement so yeah, all that's left to do is plug in the pump and away we go. So as I was saying before about the fish, um, you can use a biological supplement like Stability or Cycle or Quick Start. Um, that just grows a bacteria colony in your aquarium quicker than if you were to just let it cycle naturally, which takes around a week. 
Uh, so I let it run for a few days and I was adding a bacteria supplement every day. So yeah, everything's pretty much all good. And regarding the filtration for the water, it's basically a hydroponic system. So when the pothos grows a bit, extends some of its roots into the water, those roots will filter out nitrates. Lastly, we just add the frogs back in, wait a couple days with adding that bacteria, of course, and then add some fish. So I've added two species of fish into here. I've added uh, white clouds. These ones are gold white clouds. Uh, so I've got seven of them and I have four of these firetail gudgeons as well. These fish are great because they can go in both cold water and tropical water. So they're pretty much hardy, versatile fish. So if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, smash the notification bell, check my Instagram in the description. But until then, I'll see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.